John Lennon, you've heard his name many times, but do you truly know about this world-renowned barrier breaker and how he changed the world? John was born to his estranged mother, Julia Stanley, and his mostly absent father, Alfred Lennon. Julia took care of John because Alfred wasn't around much. Alfred was mainly a sailor and was out on sea most of the time. Julia was very estranged from her family, and her family didn't care for Alfred at all. Julia Lennon's family, the Stanleys, were against how Julia was living in sin, and decided that John would be better off with a strict aunt, Mimi Smith, who was Julia's sister. Mimi was a very controlling woman. She was strict and didn't give John much affection. She even went as far as to forbid Julia from seeing John. If Julia would come over to talk to her, even see John, Mimi would lock John in his room and block the front door. John didn't see his mother often, and on the rare occasion that they did see each other, it was for a very short period of time. When together, they didn't have time to do anything big. In place of big family events, Julia would teach young John chords on his ukulele. Julia bought John a guitar, but he struggled with it and found the ukulele easier at the time. These factors caused them to become distant from each other. Lennon's poor home life led to a poor school life, too. Despite John being seen as bright, he had a poor school life. He tended to slack off and fool around in school. He led a gang and often shoplifted or mocked his peers. Lennon was angry, not just at people, but at the world. In his childhood, John felt he never truly belonged anywhere, and it's believed that that's one of the components of his cruelty. An ex-girlfriend said he would even walk up to kids with deformities and make rude faces towards them just for fun. That sometimes erupted into anger and physical violence between the children. It is believed that his violence could have come from his restrictive childhood. He didn't live with his real parents and never liked people much, probably due to isolation as a child. During his later school years, he started a band known as the Quarrymen, which would later become the Beatles. The Beatles didn't start out with the members we've come to know. John Lennon didn't even know any of the future Beatles. The first Beatle John ever met was Paul McCartney, the Quarrymen's bassist. Ivan Vaughan introduced his fellow bandmates to his friend from school, Paul McCartney. John and Paul chatted with each other, and Paul showed John how to tune his guitar. Paul then sang a few songs for the group. They soon took a liking to each other. The small encounter would mark the phenomenon that was the Beatles. The next of the four lads from Liverpool to appear in John's life was George Harrison. The Quarrymen were looking for a third guitarist. Paul McCartney suggested his friend, George Harrison. George was younger than John and Paul, at the age of 14. John was 16, and Paul was 15, so John always tended to see George as a little brother figure. George auditioned for the role of the third guitarist atop a double-decker bust and played Bill Justice's Raunchy. The fourth and final Beatle to join the band was Richard Starkey, more commonly known as Ringo Starr. Ringo was a drummer in the band known as Rory Storm and the Hurricanes. They often played at the same club the Beatles did, known as the Cavern Club. The Beatles drummer at the time, Pete Best, was often absent, and Ringo filled in for him, despite the fact he was in a different band. Ringo wasn't the official drummer until after Love Me Do was released. Before then, George Martin, the Beatles' sound director, demanded that Pete Best be replaced. Once they replaced Pete Best with Ringo Starr, Fans grew angry due to the replacement of Pete Best, and fights had broken out because of this change. Little did they know what the Beatles would soon become. The longer they were around, the more fans they gained. At the pentacle of their fame, most people knew the Beatles by name. As soon as they got the chance, they started to tour. On February 9, 1964, the Beatles went on The Ed Sullivan Show for their first live TV performance in the United States. At 8 o'clock p.m., John, Paul, George, and Ringo were seen by 73 million Americans on TV. Two days later, on February 11th, 1964, the Beatles finally did their first U.S. concert at the Washington Coliseum in Washington, D.C. Americans did know the Beatles well before this, though, because of their one, number one hit in America entitled, I Want to Hold Your Hand. Later on, on August 12th, 1966, the Beatles started their first American tour. This tour is associated with their album Yesterday and Today, Revolver. The tour later ended on August 29th, 1966. John felt many ways about touring, and even being a Beatle. His opinion often changed and differed from time to time, though. In an interview with Rolling Stone's Time magazine, he said if he had the chance, he would be anything except a Beatle. He explained that it wasn't because of his bandmates or other things, but because of the fans. He said, quote, censored. I resent being an artist. In that respect, I resent performing for effing idiots who don't know anything. They can't feel. I'm the one that's feeling because I'm the one that is expressing. They live vicariously through me and other artists, and we are the ones, even with the boxers. When Oscar comes in the ring, they're booing the heck out of him. He only hits clay once, and they're all cheering him. I'd sooner be in the audience, really, but I'm not capable of it. 
He explained that he hated that the fans didn't really feel. They just listened to the music and enjoy it. Of course, though, his opinion changed daily in a sense, so we will never really know how he truly felt. At the height of Beatlemania, John made a mistake. On March 4, 1966, John had stated, We're bigger than Jesus. And immediately following that, outrage had sparked. Many radio stations banned Beatles music, and someone as far as recording them smashing records on live radio. They were sent death threats, and their fan base dropped significantly. This marked the end of their touring career, and was the first spark that would lead to their eventual breakup. John was married to a woman by the name Cynthia Powell. Cynthia was John's high school sweetheart. They would be together until publicly announcing their divorce in 1969. Cynthia and John had a son named Julian. John Lennon tended to beat his son and wife due to the fact he was immensely stressed. He was cruel to them, and that had led to their divorce. Another reason or person that caused them to divorce was a woman named Yoko Ono. Yoko was an artist who went to Gakushin University and Sarah Lawrence College. John and Yoko first met November 1966 at a London gallery where Ono was preparing for an exhibition of her work. They were introduced by gallery owner John Dunbar. Although the exhibition had not yet opened, Lennon wanted to hammer a nail into a clean board, but Ono stopped him. They then started to meet each other in private. One day, Cynthia went on vacation and was supposed to be home in a week. She came home early to surprise John, but the surprise was on her. She walked in and on John and Yoko staring at each other in John and Cynthia's bedroom. This made John and Cynthia more distant. In 1966, after John fell in love with Yoko Ono, Cynthia and John divorced. Many fans believe John and Yoko Ono's relationship led to the eventual breakup of the Beatles, but Paul McCartney said it wasn't their fault. After the Beatle days, John did many interviews. He had spoken about having mixed opinions about being a Beatle, but most didn't expect them to eventually break up the band for good. On April 10, 1970, Paul McCartney announced that John was leaving the band. George, Paul, and Ringo Starr knew that he was leaving for seven months before the breakup announcement. Paul McCartney said that it wasn't actually Yoko that tried to break up the band. McCartney said it was actually John. John was tired of how the band had so many unhealthy and tiring rivalries amongst themselves and other people. He just wanted to go his own way. By then, he had already made his own albums and his own music. He just wanted his own thing, something his band could never provide. John, despite not being a very peaceful person in his personal life, was a peace activist. His best-known scene of activism was during his honeymoon with Yoko Ono in 1969. John and Yoko Ono stayed in bed from March 25th to March 31st. John and Yoko were advocating for world peace. They didn't leave the bed and allowed the press in from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. every day. They answered questions all day and didn't seem to mind. Many people were inspired by this. Some didn't care and some thought it was unnecessary and they were wasting their time. There were many opinions on this bed in, but that didn't stop them. Many people have negative feelings about Yoko and John, especially after the Bigger Than Jesus stunt, but they did fight for, or in this case, sleep for, things like peace. It seemed that John's life was improving. He was getting fans back, making music, and activating for peace. But despite this, nothing could stop what was about to happen. His death. On December 8, 1980, in New York City, John Lennon was assassinated at the age of 40 by a man named Mark David Chapman. John walked outside his apartment in Manhattan at 8 p.m. and was shot by the same man who asked and received an autograph from him a couple of seconds before. Mark David Chapman admitted thinking to himself, Hey! You got the album now. Look at this. He signed it. Just go home. But he wouldn't. Chapman stated, I shot John in the back twice with hollow tip bullets to make sure he would be dead and feel my pain. John was rushed to the Roosevelt Hospital, but was dead upon arrival. His death caused so much upstairs. Even people who weren't fans were scared. John Lennon was only 40, and he had so much more he could have done with his life that was destroyed by Chapman. Chapman will be eligible for release on parole in 2020. John Lennon's death was very impactful, but his life was affected more. John Lennon's life was an impactful life that affects people even today. So many people loved John's music, and many consider John Lennon one of the greatest musicians of all time. He affected bands back in their prime in the 60s and people to this day. His legacy will live on for a good reason. He did some good things and some bad things, but in the end, he was one of if not the most impactful musician in rock history.